Listener Production. Welcome to the Motorsport Brief. It's Thursday the 16th of November 2023. While all eyes are on Vegas this weekend and the much-hyped return of Formula One, we're also gearing up for the title-deciding round of supercars next weekend in Adelaide. Today, the young driver who claimed a special place in the record books last year, taking the final ever win for Holden and Commodore, will join us on the shortcast. G'day, it's Rusty here with another edition of the Garage Motorsport Brief. Well done to everybody involved in the Speed Series doubleheader at Sydney Motorsport Park and Bathurst over the past two weeks. It was awesome having the international drivers here as a part of the TCR World Tour. They were fantastic in the broadcast. They jumped at the chance to be involved in stories between events and the racing was fierce. It was a good shot in the arm for TCR Australia. Now, we'll have more on the crowning of the new Aussie champion later in this episode. Our latest long form or feature edition of Rusty's Garage is out too with the Slide King or the Sultan of Slide, Gary McCoy, which we've had lots of requests for. The former 500cc and 125cc Grand Prix winner was fantastic from making those trademark slides effective in racing to training the next generation as a part of his involvement in the Oceania Junior Challenge. I also recorded an ep with legendary touring car racer Gabriele Tarquini while I was at Bathurst. The former world champion was incredibly passionate and his memories of the BTCC in that Alfa Romeo in the early 90s I know you will really enjoy. We'll also release Marty Craigle next month too from wildcard rides on 500cc machines in the Aussie GP to wowing some big names in the sport in his early days. His massive crash at the island and the long road to recovery, physically and mentally. Plus, the successful business he's now in and how he's using lots of the learnings from his time in motorcycle racing in the company. Now to today's guest, part of the new breed of supercars stars. Brock Feeney has only just turned 21. Crazy, we need to keep that in mind. He's already in the front line for one of the biggest teams in the sport with a huge future ahead of him. He is gearing up to return to Adelaide next week for all the pre-event promotion that goes with being a winner there and on a mission to go back to back as well. Brock, welcome. It is fantastic to get you on the pod, mate. It's been a long time coming, I feel, but we're finally here. Hey, terrific memory that popped up of you recently. I think it's you, your dad, hugging maybe after the race in Adelaide last year. Where does that rank for you in career highlights so far? Uh, yeah, I think it is at the top. I mean, I feel like I've had some pretty pretty cool moments over the years, but to win in Adelaide the last race last year um, and to have my family there to celebrate. Um, some friends were there. Jack Doom was there, actually, so it was a pretty special day, but... Um, I mean, all you want to do is get into supercars, but it's not, you know, you want to win. <laughs> and to, <laughs> to get that first win was unreal. And look, you're never going to, well, you know, I'm never going to be able to get my first ever win in supercars again. And I feel like I picked a pretty good event to do it. Yeah, you sure did. I mean, you'd won Dunlop Series the year before. You'd made that high profile step up to Jamie Wincup's drive. I mean, Adelaide, year one, such a competitive game as you've just detailed among all of those well-sorted then Gen 2 cars on the grid. It must have felt, you know, felt quite surreal to win that. Yeah, no, it was special. And look, I'd be lying if I said I didn't want to win one last year. Like, I know I'd come in and, you know, I just wanted to learn and learn the ropes and everything, but I did want to get a win and it was sort of the one box that I had in tick. So, to leave it to the last race um, <laughs> sort of took it down to the wire. But honestly, I, I'm privileged to be the last ever Holden winner. I mean, it, there was so much more to it than just winning my first race, the last one for Holden, the first one back at Adelaide, and for me, the last race in my rookie season. So I felt like it ticked a lot of boxes. I'm sure when I'm uh, 40 years down the track, a bit older and telling stories, um, it should be a good one to tell, I hope. Give us a report card on the 2023 season for you to this point. We'll get to, I guess, how brutal Bathurst was um, in a moment. But but broadly speaking, how happy you are or things that you felt like you needed to do more of, just, just give us an overview. Yeah, look, I think overall I should be happy. Um, 
I remember sitting down with Mar- Paul Morris at the end of last year and he said, look, you've done a great rookie season. He goes, it's just about stepping up next year. And I felt like I did make that step this year to, to battle for race wins and, and on the podium and in the championship fight for most of the year. But um, look, I'm stoked with the progression that we've made, but I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little disappointed that we fell out of the championship race. I mean... We clawed our way back from the start of the year. I think we were 26 points away at Townsville and we had a couple of bad rounds in the middle and it sort of put us on the back foot. But um, look, we tried to make it back at Sandown and Bathurst. <laughs> I mean, got the 300 points at Sandown and yeah, we're looking to get some points at Bathurst. But look, it wasn't meant to be, obviously, this year, but I've taken a lot from it. I think I've, well, I've certainly proven to myself that I can be in the title fight and, mate, I love, I love having that feeling of, you know, trying to race for a championship and race for wins. It's, it's a lot of fun. I'm glad you brought up Sandown. Um, you appreciate how historically significant that race and that place is. That, too, must be right up there. Yeah, it is for sure. I mean, that's, that's probably one of my biggest wins. Um, to win that race and to do it with Jamie is very special and Look, you don't know how long the race is going to be around for. Um, to do it in my first 500 as well, uh, it was, look, we were just two bikes going racing and we were having fun that week. I mean, we'd had a ball a couple of weeks leading up to it. We got there Friday, everything felt great and we hit the ground running. So it felt like it was sort of meant to be that weekend. We had a real strong weekend, but it was sort of two teams going at it. So it's a pull that off the way it did at the end. I mean, without the safety car, I feel like it would have been a little nicer to the finish line. But mm. um, for me to personally to do it with that pressure at the end, it, it felt great. And look, I said, I don't know if Brock of 12 months ago would have hung on to that. But um, yeah, I felt like I've, I've made a step forward in that department. Just tell me about working with Jamie there too. I mean, he's a competitive athlete. He always has been. Looked like he'd lost... Not a lot, really, but being, you know, in that management role for the, the rest of the year, fundamentally. Um, what was it like working with him in that way? Because I, I would imagine he was allowing you to, to lead and, and, and that he would compliment you around the edges. Was it sort of collaborative? How did you, did you go about that weekend and yeah. Bathurst? Yeah, it's very much a team effort, I suppose, between me and Jamie. And I suppose it's different to a lot of other uh, main drivers and their, and their co-drivers because the main driver's leading their co-drivers so much of the time. But to me and Jamie, it just feels 50-50. Like we're just, hmm. we're just working on it the best we can for each other. And the thing that I love working with him about, it's obviously the race weekend, but it's all the stuff leading up to it and his preparation and his attention to detail. Like we sat in the car Thursday night at Sandown and we're like, far out. Like everything's very good. You know what I mean? Like everything felt yep. awesome. All the little changes that we'd made were great. And it just sets you up for a good weekend. And, um, yeah, we, look, as I said, we just had a lot of fun together and, and the result paid off, but then what he did on track was unbelievable. <laughs> I could not believe yeah. it. I should believe it because of, of who he is and what he's done, but watching him do it after a couple of years out of the seat was pretty special. And yeah, I'm pretty lucky to have him as my, as my partner in the two big events. Most definitely. You mentioned before about that little feeling of, of perhaps um, disappointment about not being at the final round in the, the championship fight, given the rest of the year that you've had. What happens now? Do you <clears throat> sort of, in a team sense, help Shane or is the lure of you going back to Adelaide and, and you know, trying to finish the year with another win, um, you know, a little greater? Yeah, I suppose there's a bit of everything in that. Um, <laughs> look, for sure, we want Shane to win the championship and we want to win the team's championship as well. So <clears throat> we'll do whatever we can to make sure that happens. Um, but at the same time, I'm fighting Will for third in the championship. I'm only nine mm-hmm. points off him and um, yeah, he's going to be my teammate next year. So I want to beat him to the championship. <laughs> 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 um, but at the same time, look, you want to... I want to try and win the race. I want to try and mm. I'd love to, to stand on the podium again at Adelaide. But as I said, look, um, driver's championship and team's championship is going to be the number one priority. But um, for me, also, I want to wrap up third. And, and yeah, I'd love to be back up there. Is it nice to be considered in that new wave of, of youngsters? I mean, for all three of you, um, you know, Brody and, and Will to be on the podium there at one stage during the year. It felt like for many of us that have been around the game for a little while that that new wave had arrived, Brock. Yeah, it is cool to see. And 
look, when I do get up on the podium with those three lads, it's pretty cool to realise mm. how young we are and you see the stories come out. I think we were the youngest average podium. So that's pretty cool and it's special to be a part of that. And, look, I just hope that it um, promotes more young kids and, and gives them the opportunity and, and shows uh, teams that um, some young guys can get in and do it. So uh, it's great to see some new kids coming in next year. I know we've got Woody coming in and um, Aaron Love and a few other guys. So it's awesome to see. I mean, we I'm not worried about my age. Like, I don't think about my age at all. But it's, mm. uh, if it can do anything, I hope it um, promotes some more younger kids to get in the main game. Great outlook. That's terrific. Much has been said about the new cars this year. As someone with a kind of fresher set of eyes in supercars, maybe not, um, you know, massively attached to the older generation machines, if that's if that's fair to say. How have you found them this year? And after the tweak that the Mustangs had for the Gold Coast, how much closer are you expecting the fight in Adelaide to be with them? Yeah, it's, it's been an interesting year and uh, we've come such a long way from where we were at Newcastle. I mean, we were we were fighting these cars at the start of the year. We were <laughs> we were getting that hot at the start of the year. The races were super long. Uh, it was hard work, but I feel like where we've got to now, we're in a pretty good spot with the cars. And um, for me, I think I'm lucky that I didn't have 10 years in these old cars and was so was not stuck to my way in the old car, but I sort of got in this car and it, yeah, I just sort of got on with it. And I tried not to think mm. about it. I mean, there was a lot of talk this year about cars, so... I just tried to focus on doing my job the best that I could and, um, yeah, where I could try and help improve the car, I'd let the team know. But it's been interesting. I mean, obviously, there's been a lot of talk about the differences between the two cars, but they were super competitive at Gold Coast. So um, I think you can expect the same at Adelaide. I think it's going to be the same sort of guys in the mix. It's uh, Look, it's similar in ways, but, uh, yeah, it's going to be going to be interesting and then it's all going to change in a month's time well maybe Absolutely. we'll see what happens <laughs> yeah. how have you dealt with the heartbreak of Bathurst you I, I think um it doesn't change the result Brock but that that raw that very real interview that you did with Chad Nalon that is a credit to you um it, it gave us a very authentic sense of how you felt at the time you've had some time to reflect now on, on it how do you feel yeah, I mean, talking about it still hurts. <laughs> Does it? There's no lie about that. And every time I see someone, um, they bring it up. <laughs> but uh, that's okay. Everyone, look, the support was unreal and I really appreciate everyone reaching out. Um, yeah, obviously now it's, it's gone, it's done. I've hmm. been trying to forget about it. But, uh, yeah, at the time it, it hurt. Like, yeah, dream of being at Bathurst and being in the mix with, you know, one stint to go and all you say is you've got to be there at the end of the race with the clean car. And um, we seemed of the top three, we were the one with the least problems throughout the day. So, mm. um, yeah, look, it's gutting, mate, but um, I'm trying to mm. trying to move on from it. I think the, the week afterwards, I just tried not to think about race cars one bit. But um, we're um. back on the horse now. I've been, <laughs> been back in the gym and and just trying to really put my head down to this last race because I really want to finish the year on a high and uh, go into next year with some good confidence. And people can't see this because this is an audio experience, but I know your smile kind of um, belies immense determination in that, mate. So yeah. um, we wish you well in Adelaide. A few, few more here if we can. You've spent, you know, lots of time with Shane over the years, both at, at Norwell and, and now as a, as a teammate. Um you're very much your own person, right? But what are the what are the takeaways, the things that you've perhaps learnt um, from SVG that you might take into 2024 and beyond? Yeah, there's there's a lot, mate. I mean, it's look, I'm so stoked for him that he's going to do this NASCAR thing, and mm. I think everyone is. Everyone, you know, he really wants to do this, and I'm stoked to mm. see him. So happy to do it. But at the same time, I'm upset that um we're losing him. Not only me, but I think the sport's losing him. Um, he's been a he's been a great ambassador for the sport and what he's done and what he's done for me he's been awesome I mean he probably doesn't notice it but just him driving and me getting to look at his data and video you know is a massive help and to be able to see everything and what he's done the last few years I mean last year I mean <clears throat> he what was it 21 wins or something ridiculous like just out of control like I uh, don't know if that one will ever be beaten that's a pretty that's a pretty good record but um yeah, just to see him do his craft has been awesome. And for me to be there as a rookie, just to try and learn off him has been pretty special. So 
Um, yeah, there's plenty of times. We're super open. I mean, that's the great thing about the team. It's mm-hmm. open. It goes both ways. And for me to be able to learn off a guy like him has been pretty awesome. And, yeah, let's hope I can keep leaning on him in the future and he can keep sending me some tips from the U.S. Excellent. He, he talked about, you know, Richie Stanaway and, and the private um, love or want of him perhaps taking over the 97. Now, we know that's not happening, <clears> right? <throat> Richie's already up and running with, with Groves. From the time that you spent with, with Stanaway, how much of a force are you expecting him to be in those Grove Mustangs next year? Yeah, I mean, what you saw at Bathurst and Sandown just shows that he's, he's going to be right up there and right in the mix. He's... Um, I've really enjoyed hanging out with Richie this year. He's been awesome. And just to see how motivated he is and how hard he's working to get back in is really good to see. So, um, yeah, I've become good mates with him this year. But yeah, I'm looking forward to racing him next year. I never got the chance to race against Richie. So I got no doubt he's going to be right in the mix. He's a, he's a sharp young lad that's, you know, he knows what's going on. You know, he's, he's He's been around the world. He's done a lot of things. So I'm looking forward to, to racing him, and i got no doubt that they're going to be in the mix. If you don't mind, we'll get you to hang on there for us for just a few moments. A quick break now on the Motorsport Brief. More from Red Bull Ampole Racing's Brock Feeney right after this. You're listening to the Rusty's Garage podcast, our special motorsport brief or shortcast edition. Delighted to be joined today by Brock Feeney. It's his first time on the podcast and he's kindly agreed to answer some of your questions too. All right, a couple of questions from listeners here, if you don't mind. Yeah. John Schumann on Facebook says, can we expect another Brock win in Adelaide? I'd like to hope so, John. <laughs> uh, that's, uh, I mean, I try and go to every race to win it. Um, but, yeah, as, as I said before, there's there's a lot of things going on in Adelaide, a lot of balls to juggle. Um, but, yeah, hopefully come Sunday afternoon we can stand on top of that podium again. John Woodcock says, does Brock think that he's ready to step up and replace SVG as number one next season? I'll, I'll add a little bit to that question, Brock, if you like. Maybe there won't be a number one per se with Will coming in, I, I don't know. But um, to Jamie's point, do you feel like you're kind of ready to take a, a step up in the level of leadership, if you like? Yeah, I mean, uh, there's, there's no numbers like, mm. <laughs> within the team sort of thing. Um, for sure, the last couple of years, Shane's been the a lot of things we've lent on him for, just because I don't have that experience. But I think with Will coming in, where we've both been in the sport for a few years, I think he'll be in his fourth, I'll be in my third. So we'll lean off each other a lot. I think maybe for the first couple of months, I'll obviously be able to relate to the team a little bit more in what we did this year. So there's going to be some areas where maybe um, I can help the team with, but for Will, it's going to be awesome to have someone new with fresh ideas and and coming from a different team with a different aspect. So I'm looking forward to, to learning off him as well, and I think the whole team is. But, yeah, as for numbers, I don't think – there's no numbers. Like, I can guarantee mm. you that. But, um, yeah, to your point, I'm – yeah, <laughs> I'm going into my third year. Um, I am, look, there's there's no 30-year-old really experienced driver in the team anymore. It's two young guys. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward just to working with Will and, and trying to build this team. Uh, well, we don't need to build this team, but we want to get back to the top. We want to we want to be back on top where we've been. And um, let's hope we can still do that this year and, and we can continue it on next year. Good outlook. Here's a nice question that you'll like from Carl Matthews. He says, how special was it to stand on the podium with your father, Paul, at this year's Australian Grand Prix in Melbourne? Yeah, that was awesome. That's that's very high up for me. Um, it was very weird, though, because I just won the race and I pulled up at the podium and Dad wasn't there. And I was like, I'm like where is he? Like, what? I saw him walking down and uh, my mum was there and all my team were there. And I'm like, the crew, I'm like, where's my dad? And they're like, oh, he's up on the podium. And I'm like, oh, no way. No, yeah. So I've rolled, I've rolled up to the podium and their dad is. Um, so that was, that was very cool. I mean, that's, a, that's an, awesome, um, an awesome memory for me. I got some photos printed out for him and Nan. So it's hanging in dad's office and over at Nan's house as well. Love it. Couple to finish here. I know supercars is your is your focus, right? You've done some GT races for the team and so on. Is there things down the track, other stuff that you'd like to have a, a crack at? What is on the Brock Feeney wish list? <laughs> yeah. Um, look, for me, my goal is supercars, and I wanna I wanna 
hold the trophy at the end of the year. That's my goal. Um, look, I love racing. That's why I've been doing the GT stuff. I'm just trying to get as much experience as I can. Uh, I want to go and do some more races overseas in the GT cars and that, but um, I suppose I'm open to, to driving a lot of things. Um, I just want to race. I mean, I'm looking at next year going, man, what am I going to do in these breaks? <laughs> so, um, yeah, look, I want to I want to keep racing, doing more stuff. Um, but as I said, look, everything that I do revolves around supercars at the moment and, and it's certainly going to be that way for a while. So, look, we'll see what happens in the future, but um, I just want to keep racing more cars, <laughs> more cars Great and more stuff. tracks and keep doing it more often. You mentioned about keeping in touch with your good buddy Jack Doohan before there. I mean, he's gone the single-seater path. Was that something you ever contemplated or was it only ever supercars and, and kind of tin-top racing for you? No, I, I did want to do it initially, actually. So, yeah, in 2017, I won the Australian Kart Championship and we went over to Europe for three months to compete in some of the world events over there. And, and we did real well. We are on the podium at a few of them or two of them and... Um, I was set. I'm like, man, I want to come to Europe. I'm, I'm racing all these guys. I reckon I can, I can give it to them. And, um, yeah, we got back home. We did a little bit of testing in a Formula 4, but, um, yeah, I think we were, we were smart and we were realistic and, and realised, you know, just how tough it was to get to supercars. So we put all our focus on that. Um, we went and saw Paul Morris and he, he told us to go to the 86s. We did that and, um, yeah, a few, few years later we're here, but uh, like generally I'm I'm stoked with the decision that we made to stick stick here and and come to Supercars because like I'm I'm at home I'm I'm racing for the top team in Australia and uh, yeah, life's pretty good at the moment so um yeah I'm stoked stoked for Jacko as well I mean it's awesome to see and so many of those kids that I'm racing are in like Formula Two and that now so it's pretty cool to have the connection with a few of those guys. Outstanding, mate. Thank you very much for your time. Um, last win for Commodore and Holden in Adelaide last year. It'd be nice to add first Adelaide win <laughs> in a Camaro to those history pages. Go well for that final <clears throat> round. Give your lovely mum and dad our best for Christmas. All the best for 2024. And as I say, thank you very much for coming on for a chat today. No, thanks very much for having me, Rusty. He is terrific, isn't he? I wish I could speak that well at age 21. Incidentally, Ryan Walkinshaw will be with us next week for the short cast before he jets into South Australia for the final round. So if you've got some questions, hit us up on social media. Some other news now before we wrap up this edition. Massive congrats to Josh Buchan. The Hyundai Pilot won the TCR Australia title in the final race of the season at Bathurst. He was a very gracious champion too, who hasn't come into the sport in the same traditional way as most young racers. Outgoing champ Tony D'Alberto in the new Honda Civic Type R stormed to the runner-up spot. It was a heartbreaking weekend for Bailey Sweeney, who had been top of the points for much of the year and incredibly consistent, only to have a few issues at the final event, and he slipped to third. From all of us, keep boxing, Bailey. James Moffat has won a national title, and he was incredibly proud, a bit emotional too. He is the 2023 Trans Am champion, and it was a bit of a testing year for the Gary Rogers motorsport driver with off-track hearings and appeals at times overshadowing things. To his credit, he, Alan Heafy, and his GRM crew preferred to do their talking on track. He even overcame a transmission issue in the final race when we thought it might slip from their grasp. The name Moffat wins a title, and he did it at the mountain. That is very cool. They've spent a fortune to race in some very cool conditions at night, but all is in readiness for the much-hyped Vegas F1 race. They say there should be some good passing there too. If you don't already, make sure you give the 1980 F1 champion Alan Jones a follow on Instagram. He posted a brilliant podium pick recently from his win in the Caesars Palace race there in the early 1980s. I bet that party was a good one afterwards. And best of luck to competitors in this weekend's Australian Rally Championship decider with the Bates brothers, Lewis and Harry, respectively, fighting it out in their own backyard in Canberra. Just 20 23 points separate them with 110 up for grabs. Lewis on top of the ladder, as I said, and trying to take 
consecutive title wins. That is it for this edition of The Brief. I'm off to round one of the Kiwi Summer Series, the Super Sprint Motorsport New Zealand Championship in Topor, the centre of the North Island, where they will race next April in supercars. Bye for now.